What's up, everybody? Everyday Hockey. Yo, Isha, what are we talking about today, man? Well, there's a bunch of players who are waiving their no move and no trade clauses. We can talk about Jeff Skinner. He might be on his way to Seattle. Man, shut up. Keith Yandel just got bought out. Show some respect. Drink up, buddy. This one's for you, Yandel. Welcome back to Everyday Hockey, presented by DraftKings, the leader in daily fantasy sport. Don't forget to use promo code THPN upon sign up for a bonus. And if you're a regular user, plug that promo code in for a weekly deal. Today, we talk about the Florida Panthers buying out Keith Yandel. Let's get to the nitty gritty. All right, Dylan, we projected this on a video earlier this week when we talked about potential buyouts in the National Hockey League. Keith Yandel, first one to go. The Iron Man has been bought out. Everybody pour a drink for old Keith today. <laughs> I uh, Dylan poured one for me prior to this video, as you all can see. There we go. Yeah, we're, we were not surprised by this. I think it was pretty obvious with the cap situation that the Florida Panthers are in right now. They need to free up some space. And in the short term, that's what this buyout accomplishes for the Florida Panthers. Well, and you look at some of the players that they re-signed today upon buying out Keith Yandel. Yeah, so they just re-signed Anthony Duclair to a three-year deal worth $3 million per season, and Gustav Forsling to a three-year deal uh, worth just under $3 million. It comes in at $2.7 million per season. So there you go. The savings... You the know, proof is in the pudding, The folks. savings from the Keith buyout went directly to re-signing those two players. Yeah, so let's actually look at the buyout structure for this contract. In year one, the cost of the buyout is going to be $2.3 million. That's $4 million in savings. Not bad. Uh, year two, the cost is going to be $5.4 million, savings of just under $1 million. Uh, year three and year four, it's a cost of $1.2. So basically, they're losing, they're spending an extra $1.2 million in those final two years of the deal because, of course, Yandel's actual contract is only a two-year contract. Not the worst buyout structure, you know, one year where it's like, oh, it sucks against the cap, and then one year of, you know, real cash lost from that organization. Look, the owners of the organization, the Florida Panthers, that is, they got deep pockets, you know, the, it doesn't it doesn't affect them. But of course, the franchise itself doesn't bring in a lot of dollars. So that that's where it's going to be a little hard. Yeah, you know, the last two years, it's 1.2. I mean, it sucks, but you can stomach that. It's not like it's a $4 million cap buyout. It's not Ryan Suter and Zach Preeze. That's exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> um, it's not going to be too long of a video. Let's quickly just list some potential teams that could be interested in Keith Yandel's services. All right, the first one that came to my mind was the Carolina Hurricanes. We've heard oh. that Dougie Hamilton is, of course, on his way out of Carolina. I think Keith Yandel would be a good cheap option to replace him. Very similar style players. And also, I mean, this guy's the Iron Man. He's going to play 82 games next year. Well, that, that's a great point. Um, my first one, and I know our Canucks bias, our BC bias slip, slips in a little bit in these videos, but I think the Canucks are a, a good option. Again, for, for a short-term deal, maybe two, three years max, because the Vancouver Canucks are potentially losing veteran Alex Edler this year. Um, Travis Hamannick, though he ex expressed um, that he would like to stay in Vancouver, depending on the price point, you know, he might go find another team to play with in, in Western Canada or just in the Western Conference in general. So the Vancouver Canucks need some veteran def uh, defensemen on the back in any ways to surround the likes of a Quinn Hughes, a Jack Rathbone, some of these younger guys they have coming up. And especially if that Nate Schmidt trade does happen, exactly. they need to replace that guy. Um, who else you got? All right, so a couple other names on my list. The Boston Bruins, they're always, they're, they're trying to stay competitive. They're trying to keep this core together. I think Keith Yandel would be a good option on a one-year contract with them. Boston boy, too. I mean, I'm mistaken. Yeah, he is. There you go. Uh, Minnesota, they're obviously another one now that uh, Ryan Suter has been bought out. That sh basically shook things up for the Minnesota Wild plans there because for the longest time, it, it kind of looked like Matt Dumba because they didn't trade him last year. The trade deadline obviously wanted to make some waves in the playoffs. Understand that. Their, their backs aren't against the wall now to uh, expose Dumba or trade him um, so that the risk is not there for Seattle to take him. So if they let 
Put it this way, if Seattle selects one of their goaltenders in Cabo Kakinen or, or Cam Talbot, in which you know Minnesota has to expose one of them, then I think the chances of Keith Yano coming in are slim. But if they have to, ex- or if they choose to expose one of their younger defensemen like Carson Soucy, then you just lost two really good defensemen on the back end, and a Keith Yano could easily come in for a three, four million dollar contract and play on the third pairing, even with uh, an Ian Cole, for example. And you know, I could see that with a number of playoff teams. You know, if a team's looking to add some offense to the back end, they might. Might have four million dollars in cap space. I think Keith Yandel's perfect for that. It's only going to be a one or two year deal. Yeah, like I said, three max is what I what I project. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I got two more here, Dylan. Uh, Montreal obviously losing a veteran defenseman in Shea Weber this year, perhaps even for the rest of his career. He's going on LTIR this year. He was banged up after this season and, and the playoffs and. Shea Weber, you know, he's been t- he's been bandaging in- injuries for the last few years and has still been pretty dominant considering his age and where he's at in his career. If he can't play this year, potentially even the next year and years after, then Montreal's going to need some sort of veteran leadership and um, a guy like Keith Yando who can play all the games and not get injured. Yeah, and after the run that the Montreal Canadiens had in the playoffs, they're going to make another push next year. A veteran guy like Keith Yando, I mean, it goes with... Uh, who they've signed in the past, right? You look at their defense, it's full of veteran guys who can get the job done. I see it being a fit. Last but not least, the Winnipeg Jets. They've needed defense since Bufflin left, since Myers left, uh, since Truba left. It was a surprise to me that last year they were as competitive as they were in the Northern Division and a surprise to the hockey world that they swept the Edmonton Oilers, but they still need defense. Yeah, they do. And, you know, having a puck-moving defenseman, it's so valuable. That's what Keith Yandel still does. You know, Keith Yandel right now, at his age, he's not going to be the most defensive guy. He's not going to be. Never was. He's not going to be hard to play against in the corners, but he can move the puck, and that's what the Winnipeg Jets are missing. He can move the puck, and he can give you some zonk. There you go. <laughs> that's it for the video today. Tell us how many miles and smiles were in the video in the comments below. Smash that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.